Hey guys, haven't seen this place in a while, have you? Well, there's a reason we're starting off here. There's a bit of a loose end to wrap up before we can say sayonara to this place. And that would be this right here. No, not the treasure. There we go. Yes, it's an assassin tomb. And this isn't like the ones we've seen before. This is unlocked through the DLC. And it's a little different. It gives some backstory on the Auditori family. As you can see by the crest right there on the door. The very glowy door. So, as you might figure, this place is a bunch of little puzzles, or at least like the usual tombs, it's a bunch of platforming type things. This one in particular has a thing for, uh, well, timed obstacle courses. And after each one, we get a little bit of a, a brief read here. Invisible Curtain. Anyhow, get to read a little bit, learn some of the backstory on Ezio's roots. Now, those gates that we saw a moment ago, those were pretty much just walls. We have to go around. And from the hint we're getting here, advanced wall jump. And we're on the other side. Eh, pretty simple, but it's going to ramp up in a moment. So the ancestor seems he was with Marco Polo quite some time ago and, well, happened to get himself a bit of a lady. That's all we have so far, but there are more developments later on. So, while we take a look at this little obstacle course we're going to have to run in a moment, the switch being the timer that starts it off. As you'd see from the backstory, it looks like the Assassin Brotherhood was unveiled to this guy, who I assume is one of the previous Auditores. And when the Assassin revealed himself, he wasn't missing his ring finger, but he had a mark on it. So at least it seems by this point they figured not to remove the ring finger, because that kind of... Well, that's kind of a red flag to mark them for the Templars, I'd guess. You'll see these sliders on the walls as we progress through here, and that's kind of the uh, egg timer type thing. It'll start clicking faster and faster as time's running out. But this one, we finish it with room to spare. And just in case we want to backtrack for whatever silly reason, these switches here keep the door open and stop the timer. Okay, a little bit more reading. I'll be talking a little bit more about the backstory that's inferred and some little brief speculation after this. There's going to be a little bit more time for me to cover that later in the episode. Now this one is where they kind of up the ante a little bit. The way we want to go is just right here, but we're going to have to hit this first switch and then a follow-up switch after that. This first switch, as soon as I... There we go. Come on. Not the hard part yet.
and you'll notice the camera usually pans on the route you want to take. This one's a very straightforward, get over there before it closes sort of thing. So that's covered. Now, we're on the other side, and this opens the uh, port colis to where we want to go. But we're going to have to do a bit of uh, a little bit of climbing to get there. Now this place uses a lot of uh, advanced jumping as they call it, like that where you run at the wall and then you rebound off it. And maybe I'm doing something wrong, but I can never really get him to go the way I want him to. Like that first time, I... well, later on's a better example. He'll end up going the complete wrong direction that I want him to move. And it's... kind of finicky. But regardless... Shit! I could have swore that I jumped the way they wanted me to. Come on. Almost. Oof. Boy. Well, that's handled. Let's see what's in store for us next. And how convenient. You got a bit of an ambulance going by outside. They always seem to wait for when I'm recording to make all this noise. Say <sighs> la vie. Now this next part, I did pretty well the first time I ran it, but at the very end there is a trick that really got me. And you won't see it on this, but once again a bit of a well, actually, you will see me kind of struggle with it. <laughs> it involves that whole advanced wall run where you run up it and rebound off in a certain direction. And once again, maybe it's finicky, but I'm sure Felonoid will just tell me I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> and I honestly wouldn't argue that point. Times like this make me wish that Ubisoft would do another Prince of Persia game. Shit. Holding left on the analog stick? Apparently not. Almost. Ow! That definitely skinned his heels. So there we go, that's how the codex pages got actually split up from the book itself. Oh, more wall rebounding. I think we all know how this is going to go. Attempt number one? Nope. Number two? Nope. How about three? Nope. Four? Maybe. Was that five and a half? I don't know. Six. That one wasn't so bad. I had a bit of breathing room in spite of those fuck-ups. But, you know what? That is the last one. Got a final entry here on the right. And that's it for this place. Mm-hmm. So that's handled. And we just have to enter the treasure room here, which doesn't have anything of real importance. I mean, Florence, but, well... My, by this point, money is growing on trees, pretty much. It is just everywhere.
But this place gives a nice amount of backstory here. It explains how the Auditori came to be. And essentially, Marco Polo just left a ton of money, and his ancestor pretty much just took it and established himself and posed as a noble and infused himself into, into society. And also, it sounds like he had some interaction with Dante. Now, Dante was seen as one of the earlier folk involved with the bringing about of the Renaissance because the way he wrote the Inferno utilized an actual consolidated language of Italian, which prior to that there were a bunch of offshoot dialects inside the regions, like the way he wrote it was based on how you would see Italian written in Tuscany, which is where we are right now, in fact. More on that in a moment. And that's another one buried. And where we come out, right here on the backside, kind of near the mine. Now we can't really backtrack. There's just, it's too dark to see, but there's just a wall of rock. But whatever. So after that, you might ask what's in store. Well, I think we need to wrap up the side stuff inside San Gimignano. Now, I have a bit of notoriety going here, but thankfully we're back inside Tuscany, so... Pizza Cape, go! Mm-hmm. Once again, we can run around and stab with impunity. Well, almost impunity. So, what is first? Oh, that is a cluttered map. I'm not going to need these. Not those. Yeah, I never look at those when I'm in a panic anyways. And they list treasures again. Huh. That's weird. But no matter. First thing I want to deal with is the assassination contracts. These are left once again by Lorenzo because he's a needy, whiny little guy. Always the errands. And there are a lot of them here. So many of them, and speaking of a lot. Mm-hmm. So, about Dante. It's inferred that, well, Dante is an assassin, but the thing is, he is never really mentioned as physically training. It's pretty much the way it's described through the ancestor is that he taught him in, e in an educational sort of sense, verbally. Telling him all the backstory. And also, the other thing you could tell from that is that, as I mentioned, the removal of the ring finger thing, that was nixed because it was pretty much stood out and said, hey, I'm an assassin. And kind of tying into the mention of Dante and what have you, he mentioned how the Templars were controlling information. And honestly, that is how the church itself was operating during the uh, what some people call the Dark Ages. I know that a lot of historians kind of get their feathers in a ruffle, if you call it that. So we'll call it the Early Middle Ages. And basically, as you know, most folks were, they didn't know how to read or what have you. And most of the uh, repositories where you had all the books and stuff, they were handled by the church. And the church took a lot of liberties with things. And the church and this is also associated usually with, uh, seems to be Templars. So it kind of goes hand in hand. The church doctored things. They doctor things because they were actually Templars, blah, blah, blah. But it's nice to know a little bit of information on how his bloodline came to here. Thing is, though, we don't know the name of the guy who was writing all of those. 
but most likely descended from Altair. Also, the Codex itself found its way over to Genghis Khan of all people. That was kind of interesting. And speaking of interesting, on the topic of something inside the thread... I mean, come on, how can you not think of that song when you see that dance? But that's one target down. And we'll make short work of his co-workers. Next guy's right up here. And... Hey, I got plans for you, buddy. Adios. Flop. And that's another one. Got another here. Uh, on top of that really tall tower. I showed it because this tower was a really big pain in the ass for me. It's just nothing was right for me, and I probably spent a few minutes trying to climb it just because, well, I went temporarily stupid while playing. That's a long way down, God. Hmm. But back to ground floor, and this last guy is pretty simple. He's just on a rooftop, the end of this little road here. Get down. Hey, guys. And next on our plate... Clunk. It's a tailing mission, which means we're going to speed things up a bit. And I found this is a pretty commonly done thing on YouTube, this little mashup clip. And this is a pretty well, pretty nicely done one. So I'll just stop talking and let you have a listen to it.
Okay, is this the last one? Because I'm really getting frustrated with these things. Well, this, sh this should go pretty well, I guess. They're both in kind of the same vicinity. So let's head on over here, and... Uh, I don't want to cause too much of a ruckus, so... Free money? Everyone has his price, boys. You may be guards, but I know you're not paid well, and... Hey! Alright. Come on, buddy. I know you wow. want it. Oh, yes. Money. Wow. And these guys aren't... Hey! These guys aren't impressed by my money. Oh, yes. And the other guy's gotten bored of it. No way, he's back for more. Okay, enough of that. Now, let me see. One of the guys got tagged or unveiled he's inside the courtyard and it looks like the other guy is as well probably someone spotted me hope you didn't need those kidneys I have been unspotted now let me see oh oh it's the buddy system they're just taking a walk together well while they're doing their buddy system thing, I'll have a little bit of a roll in the hay. Hello. Nice weather. This guy's running away, but don't worry. I'll catch him pretty quickly. Oh, and judging by the fact that it's super sped up, I think you can, uh, you can assume what's going to happen here. I should have used the throwing knife on this guy, but honestly, past a point, probably right around here. It became a matter of principle. Ooh. And I wish I could say that was the last jump I screwed up, but you know what? Um, it wasn't. But hey, squeaky Italian. Who doesn't like squeaky Italian? Don't worry, folks, it's almost over. Off over here. Almost. Almost. Bam! Unfortunately, he's a quest guy, so I can't throw around his body. But, I'll desecrate it. Take that. Oh, God, Lorenzo. Mm. All right. What is it now? Okay, I'm going to make this one go by quick. So I'll just zip on through it, and I'll be making, eh, judicious use of my throwing knives as best I can. Just so we can wrap it up quickly. Here's our first target. Well, So we're going to have to get up close and personal with these guys. So let's start with a different one. Let's, you know, this guy. Taking a bit of a walk along here. Skip ahead a bit. Magnetic hands. He came right to me. And there's another one here. So, they want me to get him when nobody's around to see it, so the best way to do this is poison. And let's just come over here. Give him a little bit of a poke in a platonic sort of way. Oh, 
Here he is. There you go. Now we've seen this enough. So let's just uh, speed this up a hair, shall we? Okay, well the, the novelty's worn thin, so this guy, I'm going to poison as well, but I'll just cut it out. Zip ahead here a moment, and flop. And that was a death flop. No, that was the death flop. It looked like he was flopping again. The next guy is up there on the tower, but he has a buddy that's just off to the side. So hop in this little rooftop garden here. Can assassinate him without me real worry. Then we'll climb up this tower here. Hi guy. Hi guy. Mm-hmm. And I think that's it. Let's take a look here. Oh. Fine. His mental health is questionable. <laughs> Timed assassination. And the only real trick here is that they're kind of scattered all over creation out here. So our best bet is to head outside the walls, procure a horsey, and just make a sweep. So I was in no crazy rush on time, so I took my time, headed out the northern gate, and I'll hit the northernmost one first. Whoops. Oh, hey. Still had the sword out. Oh, get away, horse. Let's go. Okay, that's one down. Second one. And second verse. Almost the same as the first. I've got to remember to keep the hidden blade equipped. Horse, where are you, horse? There he is. Nope, stay there. Stay there. Good horse. Well, that's done. Hey guys, where y'all going? Huh? Yeah? Yeah, whatever. Last guy, he's kinda out here on his own, but I've got time to spare. Oh, one hit. That worked out well. And let's just make our way away and maybe a bit of a jump cut and... Oh wait, no. Venice escapes kicking on. I can't cut away from that, but oh Christ, Lorenzo. Oh. I never get tired of that song. Okay, for real, this is the last one. I'm not screwing around. And Roman Ruins. We've seen that locale a few times. And a little bit of a free gift with the throwing knives, and let's see if we can find this guy quickly. Oh! That's quick enough. Hey, guys! Got your nose! Okay, done for real. Now, let me see here. 
Well, the worst is out of the way, and, uh... uh well, actually, not yet. Uh, race mission. I forgot about the race. Fuck. A delicate matter, but important to me. Could you persuade the idiot I married to come home to me and stay home? I implore you. Well, hey, it's a beat em up. These are always a cinch. Ezio's ready, aren't you, buddy? I thought so. Alright. Let's give this guy a one way trip to. Well, my fist. That kind of fell apart, didn't it? My mind blank, so sue me. And he's not around here on the ground floor. See, on the. Other side of the wall? Hello? Guy, where are you? Oh. Oh my. Alright, guy. Come here. Alright, drop it. Fist to fist. Mano a mano. Oh, uh, that's not That's not very sportsmanlike. All right, now, gimme. You bore me. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! What? Bullshit. Well, at least the mission's over, and uh... wait, it's not. He he's running away. I think I've proved my point. <sighs> oh well. Let's just track him down. Gotcha. Release me at once. You win. Tell her I'll be a good, faithful husband. Okay. Really aren't many of those beat em ups in this game as a whole. Now, the first of two courier missions, and then that. Oh, that. Okay. I need this delivered right away. If you're quick, I'll make it worth your while. It's a pretty straightforward time mission. Just run over there, drop it off. Nothing nothing really exciting. You know, we'd see we have two minutes and I get there with plenty of time to spare. Grazie. Oh, and that is one out of two done. Oh. No. Forgive me, noble one. Please, get this delivered on time and I'll repay you handsomely. Lots of reading for you guys here. Okay, 
three drop-offs, and they're just spread out. Welp. Molte grazie. Just a little bit of editing here and there. Skip you through this tedious time wasting here. Shut up, I know. Now, for the third letter, just gotta find its recipient. Horse was, was, was the recipient. Why you, you sly devil. Now, race time. Oh. I'm gonna punch this guy. I don't like him. Punch time. What the? Let's try that again. Turning. Punch. Well. Interesting. Eh. I can beat any man in these parts when it comes to speed. They say you might be a real test for me. And that guy bouncing up and down was really jacking with the camera for some reason. So this one really wasn't that bad. I screwed up the first time, but I was still more or less on track. It wasn't like, uh, it wasn't like Florence, which, oh god, Florence. This one's just, it's not as massive and sprawling. So they get a little weird with some of the little checkpoints, but nothing too weird. Shit! Oh, ladder. Hello, ladder. 36, 35. Um, got five left. Uh, move it. Now, this is kind of a dick move here. People are everywhere. Hmm. Uh, where is it? Move it. Nope, not now. Not now. Move it. Christ almighty. Ugh. You. I am angry. You have our hearts and sometimes... Entertain me. You too. You. Play. Now. He looks like a bird. Hmm. Eh. Pretty good dancing. Maybe. Not good enough. So, I kind of told a fib. I mentioned that I would not go to Four Lee and use the dies again, but I forgot that I did in fact return here. 
because I realized that I missed a database entry. In fact, the uh, assassin tomb around here is actually that database entry. And I just walked right past it without it triggering. So, changing out our die here. A little different. And here we go. Get a better camera look of it in a moment. So, changing gears, I realized that I actually missed a feather inside of Florence. You might think that's a pain in the ass in most games to collect hidden stuff, but there's something weird inside this. There is a user interface that has all of this stuff categorized here. And one of the weird things of this game is you can't go back and play past missions. And I think it's stupid because this whole layout here makes it seem ideal for doing it. Because you can view individual mission images and stuff, but it just won't let you. Oh well. I'll see you all next time, I guess. Take it easy.